Hello and welcome to update 3 on Hurricane Epsilon at 32.6 degrees north, 61.6 degrees west as of 12 a.m. AST this October the 23rd. You can see it's rather nice looking satellite appearance there as some of those outer bands are about to impact Bermuda. You can see there winds of 85 miles per hour and a pressure of 968 millibars. The storm is also moving north-northwest at 9 miles per hour and is expected to accelerate over the next few days. It hasn't been given a CDPS rating at this time due to the fact that the radius of maximum winds is not expected to impact land. So here's the storm's wind field. As I said, some of those outer bands just off the coast of Bermuda, and you can see that tropical storm force wind field just teetering on the uh, very edge of Bermuda there. Some tropical storm force sustained winds are possible to occur in Bermuda for at least some period of time, although it's expected to be relatively short, if at all. Tropical storm force gusts are definitely expected and some higher surf is expected as well, but there's no risk of hurricane force winds for Bermuda at this time and impacts overall are expected to be minimal. What are the watches and warnings looking like? Well, there are no watches or warnings in effect for this storm at this time. It's about 194 miles away from Hamilton, Bermuda, about 968 miles away from Sydney, about 1,160 miles away from St. John's, from Legans, it's about 1,768 miles away, and from Dingle, it's about 2,889 miles away. So what are intensity estimations looking like? Well, 85 miles per hour is what we run with alongside the NHC and RAM multi-platform. You can see ADT all the way down at 70 miles per hour, SATCON up to 90, SAB or the uh, Subjective Advanced Satellite Techniques from um, NOAA at 105 miles per hour, and the AMSU with a very aggressive 125 miles per hour, we can guarantee you it's not that strong. So here's our cone running with 85 miles per hour, 968 millibars, and you can see there it's expected to head out to sea over the next couple of days, although it is expected to maintain strength and there is even a possibility of the storm re-strengthening into a Category 2 briefly. After around two days time, it is expected to slowly weaken and will become a post-tropical or extra-tropical cyclone by about three days out and could become quite deep and quite significant for the United Kingdom and Ireland. Stay tuned to the Force 13 UK and Ireland channel for more information on that if that does become a significant threat. Alright, well here's the rainfall forecast over the next seven days. You can see there the h warp having some 8 to 16 inch swaths out to sea, but no significant rainfall is expected for any land areas with slight portions of Canada possibly getting uh, 1 to 2 inches of rain, but that's really the highest end of rainfall amounts possible. Well, here are sea surface temperatures on a conventional basis. This would definitely not be supportive of a hurricane, but slight strengthening is possible on the, on the models due to baroclinic forcing that could definitely uh, really, really help the storm strengthen and is definitely going to be the reason for the storm's significant deepening as a post-tropical cyclone. What are the chances of tropical storm force winds? Well, for Bermuda there, you can see around 30 to 40 percent. And as we do move northward on this graphic, you can see there are 5 to 10 and even 10 to 20 percent chances of tropical storm force winds there for Canada, just on the very tip of the 10 to 20 percent chance ranges. No other land areas within the chances for tropical storm force winds. When it comes to the chances of hurricane force winds, no land areas are actually within that at this time. You can see though Canada is kind of close to that 5 to 10 percent chance mark, but still, um, no hurricane impacts are expected for any land areas at this time. So what are models looking like? Well, when it comes to intensity, models are kind of all over the place over the next few days, with the CTCX being the most wacky. I'd almost count that out entirely. Uh, when it comes to the H-Wharf and h mod, it puts some stock into that. The H-Wharf's um, bullish solution with some significant strengthening. I mean, I'm not going to put that out of the question. Definitely a possibility. And you can also see the uh, slow weakening trend that does occur after that, but some slight strengthening again is possible over the next 12 to 24 hours. When it comes to wind shear, that's going to peak in about a day's time from now uh, before it does really um, drop off over the next day after that. And then it does increase again, as you can see quite a bit, over 40 knots of shear expected by the GFS towards the end of the forecast period. Track consensus is pretty tight with the storm making a loop-de-loop -loop as we do head up towards Greenland and Iceland. It's actually going to be interacting with another low pressure system doing the Fujiwara effect. Sea surface temperatures are going to be dropping off pretty quickly. If they're not low enough already for you, they're about to get much, much lower. And mid-level relative humidity is expected to remain pretty constant over the next few days um, as this does make its extra tropical transition. Well, here's what satellite's looking like. You can see it there. That eye has kind of collapsed in the latest few frames, but still a significant core of convection around it, and that eye could certainly come back out 
at any point. You can see a well-defined outer band with it as well. And then you can see that kind of gap in the middle, Epsilon kind of looking like its own little entity within a much larger system, which is pretty much what it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say about Epsilon. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow our outlets. First of all, the website, force13.com, with new articles coming out all the time for your reading pleasure about all things weather. YouTube.com forward slash force13 with our tropical weather bulletins, animations, and tropical updates. You can also find us on Facebook for more information on those things. And then also on Twitter, we have the U.S. branches and AU branches on there as well, but you can see the URL below. Teespring.com slash store slash force13. That's where you can find things like the smug mug to buy. And finally, the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash 413 where you can support the project and help it become even better.